So in this video, we're going to take a look at the feminine slash norm equivalents. Now, I tried to splash there, but we should know that they're not actually technically the same thing, although they are very closely related to one another. Now, if you've studied any introductory electrical circuit course, you would have dealt with feminine or Norton equivalent uh, circuits, but essentially what these feminine or Norton equivalent circuits allow us to do is to take some very, let's say, complex linear circuit, and we can actually, if we have the situation, let's imagine where we have some complex linear circuit, and this complex linear circuit is connected to some load, and that there is some voltage V here, and there is some current I coming out of this complex linear circuit. Thevenin equivalent, let's deal with Thevenin equivalent first, says that we can represent this linear circuit, or complex linear circuit, as a simple voltage source in series with a resistor. Um, keeping in mind this is still V, this will still be I, and we will call this value here RTH for Thevenin resistance. We will call this here VTH, and we will still call this our load. Now it seems almost magical because we can take, it doesn't matter how complicated the circuit is, as long as we can find some voltage and some resistance that relates to that circuit, we can actually represent the entire circuit by one voltage and one resistance. So let's take a look at what these resistances and voltages actually are. So we say that VTH is actually the open circuit voltage, or open terminal, let's call it, open terminal, voltage, uh, well, sorry, let's not call it voltage, let's say it's the value of voltage V, of voltage V. Now what does that mean? That means if I have some circuit and I have, and I want to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit with respect to some point on that um, complicated circuit, what I do is I will take this node that I'm interested in, I will find well, I'll first disconnect the rest of the circuit that I don't want to look at. I will connect the complicated circuit as it normally was, and I'll find the voltage at that node as if the load didn't exist. Now, it might sound a little complicated, but we'll take a look at an example a little bit later on, and it's very simple. Um, and it actually simplifies the analysis quite a bit from here. Now, what's the Thevenin resistance, RTH? This is the effective we call it effective or equivalent, whatever you want to call it, or equivalent resistance seen between that terminal, uh, resistance seen between the two terminals. Now, which two terminal terminals am I referring to? The terminals I am referring to are this terminal and this terminal. So if I were to look at this circuit, this uh, complex linear circuit I have here, if I were to actually look at it, I would consider the resistance seen between this terminal and this terminal. So what resistance is that actually? It's actually, uh, in other words, we can say, uh, this resistance is the resistance between the positive terminal and the negative. Resistance between the positive terminal and ground. Okay, so now if it's the resistance seen between the positive res uh, terminal and ground, we also have to keep in mind there is actually a condition. Let's say when independent sources are off. So now what I do is I take my complex linear circuit and I turn off all of my independent sources. Um, how do we turn them off? We turn them off as follows. So voltage source turns into a short circuit and any current source turns into then an open circuit. Now in electronics, we uh, make use of this quite a bit because what we'll need to do is we'll have, let's say, a three stages that are an amplifier or something. And I want to know the characteristics of one stage 
um, affecting the other one. And so I can represent this entire stage as a single voltage source and a single uh, resistor, and then I can calculate a whole bunch of things from the second stage, and then I can do the same thing with the second stage and to the third stage. So it, it makes the, thi the, the overall analysis becomes much simpler. Um, at the same time, we have, so this we call the Thevenin equivalent. So this is the Thevenin equivalent. So now let's take a look at the Norton equivalent. And so the Norton equivalent is essentially the exact same concept. So I have a very complex linear circuit. And this very complex linear circuit is connected to some load. And there is some current I coming out of it. And there is some voltage V across it. And this is my load. And so pretty much the Norton equivalent circuit says, or the Norton equivalence theorem, however you want to call it, says that I can do the exact same thing um, with the exception that I am this time using a current source and I will call this current IN for Norton current and I will call that RN for Norton resistance and this is still V, this is still I and this is still my load bearing in mind that this is ground here. So that's voltage V with respect to ground. And so now, what is IN? IN, we say, is the short circuit um, value of the terminal current. So what do I do? If I want to find the short circuit current of the terminal value, what I do is I take whichever point I'm interested in, replace it with a short circuit, and I calculate that value for I, and I will then be able to determine what IN is. Uh, the sort of convenient part about Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuits is that one can be used to determine the other. Uh, but first, well, let's just mention that RN is the same as RTH. So that's convenient, so it's just the resistance looking into it. So there is one thing you should note, and that is that VTH will equal IN times RTH. Therefore, I can go back and forth between the two. Uh, and that's the simple manipulation sort of of Ohm's law. So why don't we take a look at an example for the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So let's call this example one. And so we have here a circuit, and this circuit will be um, relatively simple. And what I will do is I will have here three resistors, and this voltage here is going to be plus 5 volts. This will be minus 5 volts. I'll call this minus 2 volts. And here I'll have 1 kilo ohm. Here I'll have 2 kilo ohm. And here I'll have 3 kilo ohm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this in a different color just to signify that this is the load. But still, it's just a resistor, and I'll call this RL. Now, I am going to call this voltage across this resistor VO. I'm going to also call this node here node A, because we'll be using it a little bit later. And what I want to do is I want to find the Thevenin equivalent circuit of this entire part here. So imagine this is my load, and my load does some things based on some things that my uh, you know, characteristic circuit here does, or my supply circuit, let's call it. Imagine this is a supply of some sort. So this supply circuit is going to maybe vary, maybe it'll do some other things we don't know about. And what I want to do is, because I have a very complicated circuit, imagine, let's say over here somewhere, I want to make this simpler so that I can deal with this other thing a little bit later on. So now how do I make this simpler? So I'm looking for the Thevenin equivalent. So let's call it the uh, Thevenin equivalent uh, looking into node A. Um, well, let's say looking in, because you technically can't take it at any node, it has to be between two terminals. Let's say looking in um, at node A and ground. Okay? 
you'll see none of these re uh, voltage sources here actually ha are, or none of these points here are actually ground. So when we're determining the resistance, we're going to have to short all of these uh, to ground. And so let's see what our circuit would look like first. So let's first find RTH. And now if you recall, the rule for RTH was we have to replace all, uh, well, we have to turn them all off essentially. And, and turning them off in this case actually shorts all of them. And they're all shorted to ground. And you'll notice I'm going to leave this thing open. So this is what I have. So I'm representing this circuit, the, well, the equivalent resistance of that circuit using this circuit here. So everything has been turned off here. So here I have one kiloohm, here I have two kiloohms, and here I have three kiloohms. And what I want to do is I want to find RTH is the resistance looking into at that terminal, between that terminal and ground, I should say. So RTH in this case is just going to be one kilo ohm in parallel with two kilo ohms in parallel with three kilo ohms. And so this whole thing will just become one over one plus or one over one plus one over two plus one over three. Now, if we actually calculate this, we'll find that RTH equals 0 0.545 kilo ohms. So now I know that I can represent the entire resistance of this circuit, well, looking into that part, uh, with a simple resistor that is 0 0.545 kilo ohms um, in value. Now the next question is, what about VTH? So this one in this circuit is a little, well, it might be a little complicated just because this circuit has multiple voltage sources. Uh, but what we can do is we can actually use the principle of superposition in this case, in order to determine what my voltage should be at the node of interest. So let's just redraw this circuit, keeping in mind that I want to keep the load separate so that I can actually analyze this thing appropriately. And so this is one kilo ohm, this is two kilo ohm here, and this here is three kilo ohm. And so this voltage, well, remember this node we called A, and so if I take that voltage, this one here, that is, is going to be VTH. But the thing to note here is this is ground. This is not ground and this is not ground. Therefore, I must apply a superposition. So what I must do is I must turn off every source except for one, calculate VTH using, let's say, voltage division. And then I must do the same for all three sources. So I expect then my VTH term should simply have three terms, one do, uh, as a result of every source. So now I can say VTH, if I were to turn on this five volt source and turn these two off, I would end up with the following circuit. Let's turn this one on so that that one stays on. This one turns off and this one turns off. And I'm gonna call this let's say between here and ground, this will be, we'll call it VTH1. Okay, so what I'm gonna say here is gonna be VTH1 plus VTH2 plus VTH3. Since I have three sources, I expect one contribution from each source in terms of the final expression. Therefore, this will be 1K, this will be 2K, and this will be 3K. This here is plus 5 volts. So now what is VTH1? VTH1 will be this voltage, we're using voltage division here, times what? Times the voltage divided across these two. Notice these are in parallel. So it'll be 5 times the, pr uh, the parallel equivalent of these divided by the sum of this and the parallel equivalent. So I'm going to write that here as 5 times 2 in parallel with 3 divided by 2 in parallel with 3 plus 1. Okay, now I'm going to write the exact same kind of expression, or well, let's redraw the circuit first, uh, just so we can see that a little easier. So I'm going to short the top one now, and I'm going to consider the minus 5 source. So this voltage again is with respect to ground. And here I'm going to say this one's going to be the minus 5 turned on, and this one is going to be here uh, turned off as well. So this is 1k, this is 2k, this is 3k, and this is minus 5 volts. 
and this is VCH2. Now we can clearly see that VCH2, using a similar approach as we used in the uh, previous superposition model, is going to be minus 5 times, now notice our uh, resistor that is the 1K and the resistor that is the 3K are actually in parallel in this case. So this will be 1 parallel 3 over 1 parallel 3 plus 2. And so now if I take the final um, source that I have not yet considered, I will first see that these two are both shorted to brown and that this one in this case will be turned on. And so here I will have, let's call this VTH3. And this one here we said was minus 2 volts. And this was 1K, this was 2K, and this was 3K. And so I'm going to end up with VTH3 equals minus 2 times, you'll notice in this case, the 1 and the 2 are in parallel. So this will be 1 parallel with 2 over 1 parallel 2 plus 3. Okay, so now I can say that my total VTH, as we said above, is going to be VTH1 plus VTH2 plus VTH3. And so if I substitute all these expressions in, I will get 5 times 2 parallel 3 over 2 parallel 3 plus 1 minus 5 times uh, 1 parallel 3 over 1 parallel 3 plus 2 minus 2 times 1 parallel 2 over 1 parallel 2 plus 3. So now if you were to actually calculate all of these voltages, you will get the following. This is 2.73, this is minus 0 0.36, this is minus, sorry, it's in the other order, this is 1.36, this is minus 0 0.36. In any case, the final answer for VTH is approximately 1 volt. Now what does this mean? This means that if I have this circuit as follows, uh, we have this minus, we have another resistor here, and that's minus, plus 5 volts, minus 5 volts, minus 2 volts. Um, let's draw this circuit here as well. Um, we'll call this thing RL, and we'll call this 1K, we'll call this 2K, and we'll call this 3K. So we say that this circuit is actually the exact same circuit as the following, where I'll say this is plus minus, I will call this, we said, was 1 volt, and this here will be, of course, connected to ground, and, well, let's make it blue and let's keep it consistent, because this is the exact same circuit on that side. So this is RL, and here we have 0 0.545 kilohms. So the evidence equivalent circuits pretty much says that this entire thing has now turned into this thing here. So if I, let's just highlight that a bit and make it clear. So this circuit here is actually the same as this, or really these two elements, I guess. Um, so that's it on seven and equivalent circuits. So just to recap, we take a complicated circuit, we find its open terminal voltage, we find its resistance with respect to ground at the terminal that we're interested in, and we can essentially uh, simplify the circuit into a voltage source and a resistor in series. Norton equivalent would be the exact same thing, except what we would have is that it would be the current source and we would be looking for the current source, current at the terminal as opposed to the voltage. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so we'll have notifications for you as soon as new videos are posted. And other than that, we'll see you in the next one.